Hello, everyone. Today I'll be speaking about the situational model of leadership and ethics in business and how those two tie together and why they're imperative to running a successful business. So I want everyone to just show of hands how many of you guys have started in a new organization or started in a new role and not really known what you're doing. OK. Yeah, I've been there too. Uh, when I was in high school, I was a food runner at a Grillstone Restaurants and Grill in New Jersey. And I didn't know what I was doing. So I definitely know where you're coming from. Uh, now, many of the times in business, we use uh, models to improve the functions of our business and optimize, you know, generating revenues, generating cash, and overall just improving the business. So situational model of leadership is kind of, you, uh, we use an analogy, a ladder. And I want everyone to imagine a ladder with four legs on it. So you're going to see this ladder, and I want you just to just imagine that you're at the bottom of the ladder. You just came into this new restaurant or um, a new role in the military, and don't really know what you're doing, and you, you want a guided uh, leader. You want someone that's going to tell you what you're doing. You want someone that's going to explain to you the job specific roles in the business uh, or the organization. And you also want someone that's going to guide you um, in, the, in the company culture and the soft skills that you need to progress. And then you're going to get up maybe in a month or two. You're going to get up to that second stage of the ladder, and you're going to see that you started to get the job-specific roles, and you're starting to make some friends in the business, so you're starting to understand how the culture works, what the norms are in the, in the business or the organization. And now we're looking at uh, the second stage of the ladder, and you're, the leader might give you some more leeway. They might trust you more, or they might give you um, a little bit more flexibility. And maybe two or three, three months down the line, we're looking at the third stage of the ladder. And now you kind of have have your stuff going on. You're, maybe you're like an advanced, uh, you might even be a senior. I know I'm doing public accounting, so the, the way I think about it is a senior associate or a manager level. And you, you've progressed. You've learned what you needed to learn, and the leader's really not micromanaging you. Now, we're on the fourth stage of the, mat, of the situational model of leadership, and it's about eight months into the organization, hopefully, if the, the followers doing what they need to do. And, we're just measuring performance evaluations and telling them if they did something really wrong or if they did something really good, we're going to give them a pat on the back. So the reason why a situational model leadership is a good model, and textbook uh, explains this well, is it, it provides direct feedback to your followers. And it, it's a good way to uh, gauge where followers at and kind of carry them throughout the business. Um, and, and as they progress, we can kind of just gauge where, how much attention we need to give to a follower. It's a good way to optimize the organization. So I want to transition, switch gears to uh, uh, a, a crisis that we had. And it was in 2008. I'm sure how many of your parents were affected by the 2008 crisis? I'm sure a lot of you were. Um, I, I, I was too young at the time, but I've only been reading about it now in business classes. And one guy that comes to mind um, that really just represents how business ethics failed was uh, Bernie Madoff. I don't know. How many of you guys know Bernie Madoff? OK, it's a couple hands. That's good. Um, Bernie Madoff, when he was caught for fraud in 2008, he reported on his, uh, his financial statements he had like $60.2 billion in assets. And he was managing a huge fund in New York City. And he was, he was spotting decent returns, and people definitely believed him, but he was, he was running the biggest Ponzi scheme of all. And this man was caught by the SEC, which, you know, eventually, and that's a good thing. But one thing I want to call back to our situational model of leadership is when Bernie Madoff started his career at uh, 20 years old, he was saving up money working at a golf club, uh, working at... Uh, I think he was a he was a restaurant he worked at a restaurant too and and that's the money that he used to start uh, trading penny stocks and 
I just want to call, if he started at that first level of the ladder and his, and his leadership incorporated an ethical component into their evaluation of him, not just the job-specific skills or the soft skills or the company culture acclimation, if they incorporated that ethical component in evaluating him, maybe through a lens like honor, duty, respect, or the honor code, or maybe whatever values that that business really, really needed, like strong ethical values, like lying, I mean, lying in a hedge fund, that's pretty bad. Um, so if they really were, were honing in on those skills in their business, maybe Bernie Madoff wouldn't have progressed in his career in such a negative way. And maybe if his leaders instilled and set that ethical tone at the base of the ladder as he progressed, he might have kind of embodied those values himself. So I just want to wrap up my speech by just emphasizing that the ethical tone that you're set in business drives the business, and also it affects the way that your followers develop throughout their lives. And I just encourage you to um, evaluate your followers through an ethical lens as well as those job-specific skills and soft skills. So I want to thank you guys for listening, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.